Hey bookworms, welcome back to my channel and to another review. Today we shall be discussing The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. I talked about this book in my latest Christmas haul, feel free to check this out if you're interested, it will be linked down below. And I said back then that pretty much the only things that I know about this book are, first, it takes place in Victorian London. Yes, hence my getup. Thank you for noticing. Let's hope my hair will stay that way throughout this video and will not fall apart. And second, that it's about a group of women who solve murder mysteries, which seem good enough. So I read this book and yeah, that turned out to be accurate about the plot. The only thing that I will add that this book has a lot of characters that are themselves already uh, famous characters from famous works of fiction from the 19th century. Well, this book seemed to have all the right parts, a bunch of things that I love. So I read it and, um, you know, I liked it. I enjoy it. It wasn't a terrible book. It was entertaining. Yes, from my tone of voice, you can probably imagine. It wasn't great either. But you know, you have to read books in context. Otherwise, you're one of those people who go watch a musical and then complain about all the singing. Who does that? I was lucky enough to find out pretty much at the beginning that this book was not one to be held to the highest standards. It shouldn't be taken too seriously. And overall, even though competent is a very good word here, all the parts of the book, you know, strong female characters, Victorian London, murder mysteries, etc. All these parts were written competently. They were good, but they were not great. And since I took this into consideration, I was able to enjoy this book and not be disappointed. But yeah, this book was definitely not very great. There's something really shallow and on the surface about it. Not shallow like you say that a person is shallow, but there's something very 2D instead of 3D here. It's really hard to explain. It's like the world building wasn't really completed and it was something very, yeah, shallow about it. I can't really explain it. But I do want to point out that there are some good things about this book and I do want to start with these things that were, in my opinion, good enough to actually uh, mention and point out here. The first one is the sense of like um, sisterhood and female bond. You know, I know so many men who think that every time a group of women get together, they're just poisons to each other, they're backstabbing each other. And while that do happen sometimes, there is also this connection that can happen between women that's so deep and you get this in this book, not from the start, which is another really nice thing. All the characters here, all the women here, are very different from each other. They fight, they don't become immediately friends. But toward the end, you really realize that they become family. And I don't know, I just thought it was very nice. Also, speaking of the different characters, so the book does find a reason to why they're all women. Is it a good reason? I'll let you read it and decide for yourself. But nonetheless, each one of them is different. Each one had their own thing going on, their own character arc. They each have her own talent and bring something else to the table. I also thought it was very nice. And lastly, there is also a sense of like, let your freak flag fly and that sometimes family are the people who are just as um, freaky as you and love you for who you are. So that's in terms of compliment to the book. Now let's go to the negative bits, which, you know, that's the fun part. So like I said, the main issue here, I felt that everything was very 2D, shallow, not very deep in terms of characters, in terms of the world building. Even if it's a world that actually existed, you know, something was very, like you were given characters, you were given facts without getting into them. It's a bit hard to explain, so you know what, I'll, I'll try giving you an example, maybe it will make things a little clearer. So she talks a lot about experiments, like crazy scientific experiments, they were really big back then in 19th century. But the problem is that she doesn't even attempt to try to pretend that there's something behind those experiments. She doesn't even try to explain them even in the most convoluted way. So you have scientists saying stuff like, yeah, I took this goldfish and turned it into a brick of gold. Now, good luck trying to wrap your head around this and how the hell was it even plausible. Now, look, I'm not asking her to be Michael Crichton, okay? I know nothing about science. I wouldn't have any way to tell if it's accurate or not, but at least try to give us something, you know? Something to make this convoluted experiment seem real and actually plausible. It's not very hard. Look, even I can do it. Watch this. 
So the goldfish has in its scale some golden pigments that with exposure to the right amount of oxidation process will make this gold pigment cells take over other cells the same way that cancer cells take over healthy cells. And soon after the entire goldfish will be entirely made of golden cells, hence a brick of gold. Ta-da! And I wasn't even trying. Like, obviously, what I said was total bullshit. Pigments is color and oxidation has nothing to do with gold. Whatever. It doesn't matter. At least, you know, pretend to invent a way. But we're giving such convoluted experiments that you can't even try to wrap your head around them. You know, people will have scars from the experiments. But what did the experiment do? So yeah, I explained this to the best of my ability. I'll just leave it there. The point is everything was just very um, kind of on the surface. There was no depth to um, most things. Now, there was another thing that pissed me off enough for me to actually mention it here. I decided not to write all the little things that bothered me, but this, this will go forever on the list of who the hell thought that it would be a good thing. So the author had this narrative device which was stupid and useless and annoying and I will call it a narrative frame for the lack of a better word but uh, so in the world of the book after the events that we're reading about and a bunch of other adventures one of the characters decide to sit down and actually write everything as a novel and this is pretty much what we are reading as we're reading The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter. Now as she's writing this all her friends the other characters are also rereading it and constantly commenting on it. You'll have a line like blah 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 said Mary angrily and then this frame will pop up like a line in a script. Mary said no I didn't I never talk angrily. If your thought right now is okay what good did that make your guess is as good as mine. This frame appeared throughout this entire book and it was so annoying it did a lot more damage than good than first of all being so irritating it happened all the time and just took you out of the story and it wasn't cute even the first time it arrived not to mention it created spoilers you knew right from the start which characters are about to arrive to the story you knew that they all survive and that they all stay together plus it used this frame to answer questions that were supposed to be answered in the moment that they happened because you know this frame happen all those comments happen a long time after the story actually occurred and people asked their question that they should have asked a long time before and it just it was just useless it just irritated me so much i had to tell you guys so in terms of flaws of the book i think i'll leave it there there are a bunch of like little stuff like historical inaccuracies and the feminism there was way too modern in my opinion. Look, I'm no expert, but I do love reading about Victorian culture. So let's just say that my knowledge is a bit more than basic. And there were feminists in 19th century England, but they were mostly concentrated about getting the right for women to vote, for example. And in my opinion, the feminism there was way too modern. But yeah, so let's just conclude the book isn't bad it isn't great either but it was entertaining and as long as you just see it as that as just an entertaining piece of literature about some murder mysteries and kind of like a spin-off theme because characters from different uh, works of literature just meet each other that's pretty cool that's pretty fun everything like i said at the beginning was very competent as long as you lower ex your expectation, you'll be fine. And I think that's okay. I don't think every book should be really amazing. But let's be honest, everything that this book did, all the little parts were done better in other works of fiction. Kim Newman comes to mind, both his Anno Dracula and Angels of Music did similar things. I actually reviewed Angels of Music. Feel free to check this video out as well. It will be linked down below. And it was actually not his best book in my opinion. And still it was better than this one. So let's just say that if I manage to get my hands on the sequel for free, I will read it. If I'll have to pay for it, mm, I don't think so. And that's it for my review, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you did like it, please don't forget to click like to show it and also to subscribe to my channel. If you dare, also don't forget to click on the bell so you'll get notification whenever I'm posting a new video. And also comment down below if you have any recommendations for good books that you like that also involve other characters from famous works of fiction. 
So again, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.